everybody. How are y'all doing? This is Mary at Yard Art R Us, and I am going to be doing some base coating on this turkey. Hope you guys are having a good one. I really meant to get on here sooner today. Debbie, how are you doing? Girl, I was trying to get on here two hours ago, and it just was not working for me. So, um, it's that time of year that we're putting out a lot of stuff at the shop. So I've been over there a lot today. How are y'all doing? Ashley's coming on tomorrow, y'all, hopefully. Unless the world comes to an end. She's going to be with y'all tomorrow, but I'm going to be with y'all tonight. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Carol. Kathy. Debbie, how are y'all doing? I'm doing pretty good. I um, It's been kind of a crazy day. But, I, you know, I can't complain. It's been a good day, even though it kind of rained a lot. We got a lot of stuff done at the shop. And uh, so I'm really, really grateful for that. And uh, it's been a productive day. So yeah, you go when I don't. I know Debbie, I was over there a lot today. I really wasn't in the inside so much as I was really carrying stuff over there. Um, so y'all, we have four big, um, oh, what do you call it, storage facilities. So I want you to think about the, the amount of work that it's gonna take to empty those out. So the approach that we've kind of taken is just not to try to do it all, except maybe make a load or two a day because it can kind of wear you out. And uh, so we made two loads, I think this morning, and we're gonna maybe make one or two loads a day until we really get a lot of Christmas stuff out. Now that we have our Christmas lights, we can, you know, put stuff out. Oh, you were there Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> hey, Nancy and Carolyn. Hey, Cindy, how are y'all doing? I am uh, gonna base coat a turkey tonight and a kitty cat and kind of show you. I think I'm gonna come on on Friday night and finish this, uh, but I'm gonna base coat this turkey. Let me turn it around where y'all can kind of see what it looks like. There you go, y'all got a better view of it now. And um, this was actually a turkey that we did last year. But uh, we kind of brought it back this year because it's been, it's just one of our more popular ones. So um, I'm gonna kind of go up here. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that eye, just the whole thing. And I've got basically a round mop brush and I'm just kind of, I did two coats of orange y'all on here. I started with two coats of orange with a roller, right? And I just kind of am now gonna put some uh, reindeer brown. Reindeer brown's are the go-to on turkeys y'all. Lots of reindeer brown. And I'm doing my side. So we unloaded a bunch of Christmas stuff and um, we also sell on Etsy and for whatever reason, I'm not sure what the reason is y'all. Yeah, I did prime. Mm -hmm. Two coats of orange, two. Um, anyway, our Etsy, well, this is our third year on Etsy. So um, our Etsy's kind of been really taken off. And so it's kind of good in a way, you know, for the sales, but it's, it's hard because you have to do, you have to imagine like a gingerbread train's gotta be, all of it's gotta be packed and shipped. So it's a lot of work doing that. So my better half doesn't trust anybody, which I really don't blame him, to do any of the packing or the shipping but himself. So what that means is he's doing all that, which is good y'all, um, but means I have to pick up his slack in other areas. <laughs> Why did you prime an orange? Well, here's, here's the approach I take, and that's a good question. The approach I take is how do I decide what color to primer in? Whatever color is the majority color of the piece is usually what I prime in. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here's the actual painted finished version. So when I look at this, to me, if any one color has a majority on this, it's the orange. So I just basically take the approach of whatever the majority color is. Now, if this was a turkey and no pumpkins at all, honestly, I probably would have base coated and the reindeer brown. But because I got half of it's orange, and then I've got some orange up here, I base coat orange twice, and that way I don't have to base coat this really, you know, with the, I did it with a roller. I don't have to do it with a brush. That's the method. Usually that's what I always do, y'all. When I look at a piece, whatever is the biggest single color is what I go with. So that makes any sense. All right, 
So we got, oh, y'all, I messed up. That's what I get for talking and not paying attention. Hold on a minute. Gotta do a little bit right here. And it don't matter really, honestly, if this is reindeer brown or if this is nutmeg, who cares? As long as it's some kind of brown, I can work with it. All right, so I did that. Okay, now this is gonna be a lime green. And because I've got small areas to work in right in here, I'm not gonna use a big mop brush. I'm gonna use kind of a, 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 I guess you could, this is probably a number eight script liner, which we don't have really. We always use number four and six, but I've got some old eights every now and then that I pull out. And uh, so I'll just load this and do it this way. That way I can kind of get up in here. There we go. And just kind of move that paint around where I think I want it. So using a, a smaller round brush like this, a small script brush. This is a script liner or it's so old it just might have been a round brush. I don't know y'all. But you get the idea. It doesn't take much. And then I can kind of just kind of, because I've got such good control with this smaller brush, it's gonna be pretty quick, pretty easy. And then I'll come out here. Of course, this still, yeah, this part is orange, y'all, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And then I'll get up uh, in the morning. This will all be dry, but I'll, it, uh, Ashley's coming on tomorrow, y'all, and doing a live, so I won't see y'all tomorrow, but uh, I'll come on Friday night, and I'll show y'all how to uh, finish this. I'll show you how to shade it and all that good stuff. So, um, Anyway, we've been really busy at the shop, so I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. But uh, I'd rather be busy than not, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm the kind of person I'd rather have too much work to do than not enough. I do not like watching the clock, hoping time is gonna go by. I don't like doing that. So just a little bit of time I've been talking to y'all. I've almost got this thing base coated. Not totally, but almost. So I'm gonna wash out that brush right quick. Hey, Kitty, how are you doing? Tell me, what have you been painting these days, Kitty? Uh, I know you did a bunch of, uh, what do you call it? Nativity scenes, because you told me you did three of those. Uh, Kitty lives, I think she's in um, Louisiana. Yeah, she's in Louisiana. She did a bunch of nativity scenes. I think she bought the templates from us and she cut them all herself, so she'd been, she'd been working. So I'm just gonna give this little part down here some base, uh, just a basic red color. Now we do have these in the shop if you're interested in buying the blank. Of course, we do sell the template too if you wanna do that. You're certainly welcome to do that. Um, we did make the decision, y'all, we will be selling paper patterns. Now it's a matter of getting them all on the website. Jeez Louise, y'all, that's a lot of work. I gotta put some yellow here, yeah, and some yellow here, and then this guy is base coated. So you can see if you roller that orange on the way I did as your primer coat, then you don't have a whole lot of base coating to do. But I'm also gonna base coat this kitty cat for y'all tonight too, so let you look at that. Hold on a minute, y'all. Here's what we gotta do. I, got, I forgot, I, got, I really need this. I need this, I, a lot of times I put this Lazy Susan, it's just something that Bruce made for me. You can get these little, the pieces of hardware um, at Home Depot. Debbie says, are you doing paint party Saturday? I am doing the Saturday night paint party, the ceramic one. In fact, I need to come on tomorrow night and kind of, uh, I, y'all haven't been able to run ads. We canceled the Christmas tree party that we had on Saturday evening, afternoon. We are really having uh, not great luck getting uh, material, MDO. You know, we've struggled with that. And so we went ahead and decided to cancel that. We're just having to be more conservative than really what we wanna be. But who, you know, who is not affected in today's world? Everybody is. So I'm, you know, I'm trying not to gripe about it. I'm trying to have a good attitude. I'm alive, I'm kicking. But y'all, with the whole supply chain being what it is, and then my Facebook being what it is, you know, it got hacked and I can't run ads. It's uh, it's it's not been fun. <laughs> it has not been fun. Mary, not sure if you saw the question above. Why did you base coat it in orange? I, I've already answered that, Con. You might have just come on, but I did. I did answer it. 
So, um, I don't know, y'all, with the whole COVID supply chain and Facebook doing what they did. I always have a tale of woe. Have y'all you, have you noticed that? <laughs> oh, y'all, I crack myself up sometimes. Hey, you got to laugh to keep from crying or laugh to keep from killing somebody or killing uh, yourself. You know, so, hey, you just got to do what you got to do to get through it. And uh, so we're not doing a Christmas tree party. We will <clears throat> reschedule that, hopefully, for later in October, y'all. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But, yeah, we, uh, we've been busy at the store, so that's a good thing. And we got all our lights in, so we got some people that come on to help us. We probably have about pieces that are going to have to have lights to make that work. Uh, Joyce and I will see you Saturday night. I saw that. I saw that. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I can say, I think y'all are doing the pumpkin tree. Mm -hmm. Y'all, painting the ceramics is so fun because it's, I, I think it's pretty easy just because it's a 3D object and it already kind of has the recesses in there. So you don't have to worry about where to shade and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to make a whole lot of decisions is what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, so just in the little time that I have been on this live, and I'm, I'm going to show y'all in a minute, just this is my base coat. Two coats of, of um, primer orange and let it dry. And then I did one coat of reindeer brown, one coat of yellow. Lord of mercy. This is lime green. This is nutmeg. And, of course, that's red. And this is what it'll look like. I'll come on on Friday. And I'll show you how to shade this and, and a highlight and outline. Anyway, we have the blank. If that's something you think you want to do, we have that one. Now, on to something that's really going to illustrate that question that somebody asked earlier. How do you know what uh, color to a primer? So this is a kitty cat, like coming out of a pumpkin. Let me show you what the final product is going to look like. This is what the final product looks like, y'all. So in this case, it's pretty doggone obvious that you would base coat this in orange because you have so much orange on it. And what I do is I use a big six inch roller. So the base coat of this primer or primer coat literally takes me one minute, really, of my time. And then I'll let it dry and it'll take me another one minute of my time to roll it again with that second coat. So if you do it that way, you don't have so much time invested in doing each piece. Now, I told you each coat here probably took me, primer coat probably took me a minute or so of my time. And somebody can time me and tell me how much this is gonna take of my time to put a base coat on here. It's not gonna take a whole long time. Now, obviously, you guys, if you don't paint as much as I do, you probably won't be as fast as I am, but that's okay. You get the idea. All right. So, I just kind of put some paint on there, and I'm going to load this up. Uh, Y'all, sometimes I go listen to myself on a, um, a replay, and, I, and Bruce was telling me one day that I have a twang, and I was arguing that I did it. But, y'all, I, I think I did. <laughs> I think I do. But I was born and raised in Texas, so I can't help it, y'all. I've never lived anywhere but Texas. So, all my life. Born, as they say, born and bred. So, I'm just kind of putting some yellow paint on here. It's not going to take a whole lot of paint because it's kind of a smaller area. Those are the eyes, the nose, and then I'm going to come down here and do the mouth. And it's not too hard. You just kind of get this brush. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here, y'all. Not at all. Not at all. Those of you in the academy, I, um, Debbie, you can tell me. Did y'all get an email? I hope you did. Katie or uh, somebody sent it besides me. Uh, but it might have been only for the uh, members who've never gotten a uh, paint roster email and a brush roster graphic email. Let me know if y'all got that if you're in the academy. I think it went out today. Okay, so I've got my yellow on there. Do I have any more yellow? Oh, I better do his eyes, his ears, and this rim in yellow. There we go. 
Hello from Mississippi. Hey, Wanda, how are you? Uh, Dr uh, Drina, you know what? I just saw your name earlier. You had asked to join the Painters Club, and I taught school for many years, so I always pay attention to names. And do you know I've never seen the name Drina? I just love, I love that name. I love that name. It is super cool. Y'all is the first giveaway. Um, okay, whatever. Debbie, Debbie's my friend. You know, she's always going to tell me the truth. Yeah, you got it. Okay, good deal. So, um, we moved to Pearland in the late 80s. And before that, we lived in a really small town. And uh, so, we would go home to visit. And Bruce would always tell me that, he's like, you do realize that when you get with your family, your twang gets really pronounced. I'm like, no, it doesn't. He's like, yeah, after about three hours, you're all telling tales. Your twang gets more and more and more. Whatever. That's what I say to him, y'all, when I don't want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> Ooh, but I don't really like what he's telling me. Do y'all ever do that? Whatever. That's what I tell him. He's like, yeah, that means you just can't think of nothing to say back. Whatever. I still do it. Whatever. <laughs> so, yes, I guess I do have a twang. Oh, well, worse things, y'all, worse things. All right, so I got my yellow, and you can tell I'm putting quite a bit of yellow on there because it's going to take quite a bit of yellow to cover that orange. And if you're painting with yellow and you're having troubles getting it to cover, that just means you're normal. Take some yellow paint and put just a little bit of white with it, and uh, your yellow will cover a lot better if you'll put a little bit of white with it. Debbie says, no, I lived in New Jersey when I was a teenager. Make sure to get rid of it because people make it fun of me. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine what they said about you in New Jersey. I had to, um, okay, I think I'll do the kitty cat now. We went to, we sell poly furniture at the store. So, um, a couple years back, we went to um, Ohio to some of the dealer shows where a lot of the poly furniture is made and comes from. And I walked into one of those shows, and y'all, I do not meet a stranger, and sometimes my mouth just does not know how to be quiet. So I walk in there, walk up to the sales manager. I'm like, hey, how are you? I'm Mary from Texas. And he's like, yeah, I got that. <laughs> I think that was his way of saying, mm-hmm, I know where you're from. It's like, okay, well, Whatever, y'all. It's just the way it is. It's just the southern thing, I guess. Okay. So, I'm doing my kitty cat. Of course, I'm putting so much paint on here, y'all. There's no way I could do a live tonight and doing trying to show you how to shade or highlight, but that's okay. I'll do that on Friday. Ashley will be on tomorrow doing... Ashley's going to do the trick-or-treat uh, totem pole. And um, so, I'm going to do some base coating. And I had meant to get on here a couple hours ago, but mm, wasn't in the cards. Just wasn't. Was not in the cards. And it was supposed to rain here all day, but thank goodness it didn't because we were putting lights and stuff and working a lot kind of outdoors. I don't mind getting wet, but I'm not super fond of it either, y'all. All right. This is a really cute pattern. Um that I've done for, I don't know, a long time. But he's always really popular every year. There we go. And we're just gonna turn this little guy around. I'm putting some black on the sides. Is your paint a gloss finish? You know, uh, um, Delilah, this is, we normally use, I think we have 40 colors or 38 colors, right? In our palette. And I would say all of them but two are semi-gloss. I think this one is high gloss and it's it's not because we chose that, but it comes from, this particular black paint comes from Home Depot and it is their stock item, which you can believe it that I would have a stock item. I kind of got lucky with that. Uh, so it is a high gloss, the black is, but the rest of it is always a uh, semi-gloss. But I'm sure you can kind of tell by uh, the light reflecting off here that this one is kind of got a high gloss finish on it. But I like this black. It's called like something like True Black, I think. And it comes from Home Depot. Of course, we buy it in the gallons. Um, and we we sell this, this paint in smaller portions. 
But if you're going to do a lot of black, then, you know, you can just buy it at Home Depot in a gallon. It's about 40 bucks a gallon. I think our we sell six ounces in a six ounce drawer for five dollars or something like that and um, three ounces for three dollars so you know you wouldn't have to buy a whole lot of paint unless you're going to do it like I, I have a lot of black but i do a lot of outlining all right so i've almost got kitty cat done y'all and then all i have to do is some green i think and some um reindeer bro that's it so you can see i've got my cat all painted up when I do lettering in black, I get streaks. Yeah, not enough. That's exactly right. And also, if, uh, Debbie, if it's real streaky, make sure you don't have too much water in there. Hey, Lou, how are you? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're hanging out with me. Because um, if you do have too much water in it, it will be streaky. It's kind of, you know, it's like, it's hard to always know, I guess, uh, exactly how much water to add and how much water not to add. So I'm gonna load this up, as you can tell. I'm just, load. see when I hit that like that? You get a lot of paint on there, y'all, but that's what I want. So this is the rim, if you will, of the pumpkin lid. This is a lid, and this is the rim. Am I supposed to be doing this in green? Yeah, I think so. I have to look. You would think after all these years I'd have this memorized, but y'all, I forget. So sometimes I have to look and see what I did last time. And I'm just putting green on my rim. And then this looks like a leaf over here. So I'm just gonna do this. Now, honestly, I could get a, a bigger brush and just do a faster job on this part because this part's kind of big. Yeah, I don't like, in case you can't tell, I don't spend a lot of time primering or base coating because that's really not my favorite part. But I like to show y'all, you know, I like to come on here and just show y'all how I do it um, in case you wanna kind of get any, see if you can get any tips, any tips. All right, so we got some green here. These are two leaves right down here. No water straight from my jar. You know what, um, Debbie, then make sure, if that's the case, I would shake the heck out of that jar really well. Um, we were talking about this the other day. You know how we had the, the big freeze here in Texas back in February? Believe it or not, that does have an effect on everything. So sometimes if your paint is acting kind of funny, like different than normal, I, of course I can't prove it, but we all, Bruce and I've talked about this. I really think it's set in these warehouses that you know are not climate controlled because most of the time there's no point in climate control in a warehouse and it freezes. And um, that's not good for paint. That's one of my guesses. The other guess would just be to shake it up really, really well. Sounds like it might have separated some. You know, uh, it's hard to know. To, to be honest with you, it's really hard to know. Because, you know, while we know what happens to that paint when it's with us, we really don't have any clue what happened to it before we got it. All right, I'm almost done. Got my almost all my base coat. You see, I keep going over there and getting paint from that. Cause I really got too much on that thing over there, y'all. All right, almost done here. Y'all see how fast that goes? And that's why it's important, whatever your major color is, I would roller that color on twice. Then you don't have to spend a ton of time base coating. I'm just evening this out. Cause I really, really y'all got too much, but that's all right. We're gonna pretend I didn't. I'll just go steal some from over there and put it over here. All right, so all of that's orange on that. That's good. All I need to do there is do some reindeer brown. That's it, y'all. See how super easy that is? <laughs> uh, how do you clean the brushes after using outdoor paint? Hey, I'm glad you asked that, um, Debbie, because as long as you're using a latex paint, which is what I use, I do not use an oil-based paint because uh, I don't have the patience for it. It's a long story. I just can't deal with mineral spirits, acetone. Nope. I just use water. You can just, in fact, this is what I keep doing when I'm leaning over here. This is my bucket of water. That's just water. That's all it is, and I'm, I'm washing my brushes out. Debbie says, I don't think I use enough paint on any of it. Well, 
I tell you, that may be it too, Debbie. Uh, over the years, honestly, I think sometimes I use too much, but it's kind of like, you know how that goes when you do something for a long time, you get a little bit like extreme with it, I guess. But um, that may be that you're not using enough paint. That's, that very well could be. So y'all just watched me. I don't, sh I don't really know how long it was, but I haven't been on that long. I just base coated two items. So this is my kitty cat, okay? And he's gonna be a uh, kitty cat coming out on uh, the pumpkin lid like that. On Friday night, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna show y'all how to make it like this. Like that, okay? So this is one that we do sell the template and we do have the blank. So, you know, it's something that, uh, it's really not that hard to paint. If you'll watch and hang out with me on Friday, I'll be showing a lot of details on the shading. Cause I think probably for most people, the hardest part is shading and or outlining for the, mo for the most part, that would be the case. I think for most folks, but I would tell you, we've had, um, several ladies uh that have been with us since the beginning and i look at what y'all got paint on the back of me i look at what they used to post and now look at what they're posting now and it's just a matter of practice that's all it is i can do it fast but i've been doing it a long time but hopefully watching me you get some ideas about okay this is how you would do it this is how you would start this is what you do next this is what you do next because I had an art teacher at my school. I taught school for a long time. I taught reading and English, but the art teacher, I would always go to the art teacher because I was always, you know, trying to figure out what I was doing. And the art teacher said to me one day, Mary, all art is is layers. And that's all it is. It's the same thing about cooking, right? You know, you, first thing you gotta do is get the food out and then you gotta season the food and then you gotta, you know, maybe flour it or cook it for a little while or whatever. It, it's a, that's all it is. And so if you'll primer with the big roller, your, your major color, do that. That'll take you one or two minutes. And then get you a mop brush or a round brush like this to lay your base coat colors down. Then on Saturday, on Friday, I'm gonna come back on and I'm gonna show y'all how to get serious about doing some of that highlighting and outlining. Let's see, Teresa says, do you use acrylic paint or outdoor house paint? Hey, Teresa, I use um, outdoor house paint. It's the same paint that's on the outside of your house. It's out, um, exterior latex house paint. That's all it is. Now, I, I buy it in gallons, right? Because I use so much of it. So that's what I use. <coughs> I don't use anything oil-based. And I don't use, you know, like you can go to Walmart and get the little jars of acrylic. There's nothing wrong with those paints, but I don't think you're going to be happy with them standing uh, the weather conditions of outdoor weather conditions, you know. So if you have to use the little bottles of paint, what I would say, if that's really what you have to use, because maybe you don't want to buy the other paint, make sure you put a lot of poly on that. It's still not going to hold up the way exterior house paint was, would, but it'll get, the poly will really help it. It's just a protective layer. That's really all it is. So hopefully um, you guys have gotten some, uh, good tips on how to base coat and how to primer. When you lay that first coat down, we call that the primer coat. That's your one color. That's your primer coat. In this case, that was orange. I did that twice. Let it dry and then I base coated yellow, a base coated green, a base coated black and reindeer brown. That's it. Super easy, y'all. Hey, I'm gonna be out here um, Friday. Ashley will be here tomorrow doing the uh, trick or treat totem pole, but she'll be on during the afternoon. And honestly, on Friday, I probably won't be on till Friday night because my days get kind of crazy. So, but hey, uh, thanks for hanging out and I hope y'all have a good one and we will see you later. Bye-bye. Well, hello everybody. It's Mary at Yard Art RS. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm coming on tonight on a Friday night and I'm going to, um, do some shading. First of all, I have to do some Windexing, y'all, because I've been, this has been sitting around in my art room for a while. So I'm gonna get all the dust and the grime and the pollen and whatever else is on here. I'm gonna get all that off. Hope you guys are doing well tonight. I, um, I've had a pretty good day today. I have been, hey Debbie, how are you? I have been doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, let me get this thing going.
Hold on a second, y'all. You know, of course this thing doesn't want to work. Let's see, Command C. I've got all kind of stuff done today and I was gonna get on here earlier, but you know how that goes. And I'm thinking the time is gonna change, y'all, and when it does, I'm really gonna be running behind. So I did these in a live the other day. Hey, Linda, how are you? Hi, April. I, oh Lord, I just wiped off the white paint. I didn't even see that. I did these in a live, I base coated them. I think it was on Wednesday, okay? So I just had to do some Windexing. And what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna do some shading on these guys. And you guys are gonna see how cute these things are once you get some shading on there. I think, um, I don't know, to me that's kind of the trick that makes it go from looking kind of plain to looking kind of good. And uh, this cat in the, uh, with this, I don't know how many years, and I think he's really cute. So um, it's Friday night. All my dogs want to do, I don't know, the minute I decide I want to come on live, y'all, they decide that they want to start barking. Hey, Dee, how are you? I, uh, of course, I'm trying to get them to be quiet, just like a bunch of kids. You know, you can't make them be quiet. So I kind of threatened them before I came on. So if y'all hear the dogs barking, you'll know it's just my dogs being really, really, really crazy. Debbie says, show us some love. That would be awesome, guys. If y'all could do that, it really does help us as uh, small business owners. And uh, just a real simple thing to do, but a very powerful thing to do. So I'm going to do some shading on the eyes here in the yellow. I'm using a shading yellow color. For those of you that were around today, Ashley did a live earlier this morning, and we've gotten all, she's gotten all kinds of brushes in. Uh, and she was kind of unpacking the brushes, the brushes, I can't talk today, and showing everybody what we have. So if you need brushes, she's gonna have them there, I think on Sunday. All right, so I'm taking my yellow and I'm shading my yellow on my cat. I've got that part done. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the turkey. The turkeys is one of my favorite things, I think, to paint y'all. And there's a couple of things I can show you that might make your life a little easier. So I came on the other night and I base coated this. And so tonight I'm shading it. So for the turkeys, what I like to do is I like for this outer part to be the lightest part, this to be the darkest. So if you look at this color, it's dark, not so much dark, not really dark and kind of light. And um, if you'll just kind of follow along on these lines that the CNC has done, you'll see it's pretty it, it's it's pretty well spelled out or laid out for you. And I just kind of come in here. And of course, I think the trick is to keep paint on your brush. Um, and then I'll show you towards the end, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna put white. I'm gonna tip these edges in some white. And that way you start real dark here and you go to white. And I really like that as far as, um, you know, just the graduation of color. And then of course I've got his beak, so I've got to put a little bit of blue, yellow on that. Not a whole lot. I'm just gonna lean over here and wash my brush out. Uh, I just have some water over here. And um, then I'm gonna pick up, y'all have to remember what I did. Okay, I'm gonna pick up some green. This route. Let's do this first, y'all. You can tell I can't make up my mind. <laughs> hey, Donetta. Is it Donetta and Amanda and Josh and Ashley Hara? How are y'all doing? And Janae, it's so good to see you guys. I'm going to do some uh, painting of the turkey tonight and showing y'all, you know, if fall is what you want to do, if that's what you kind of like, then uh, we definitely have some fall blanks. Ashley's going to, uh, I think on Saturday, we'll be getting her Sunday we getting a lot more fall blanks. We're kind of low right now. But this is a, a light orange on this part and I'm shading it in a shading orange, right? And so I'm just kind of coming in here. And the thing about your turkey, to me, it's really all about the feathers uh, to make your turkey look. Hey kitty, how are you? I saw your order come in through today. Uh, I think you had glitter, maybe some brushes and I think he ordered the, the reindeer, the big deer uh, paper pattern. We're, we're working on that today. Okay. 
So I've got this, I painted this in lime green and here's my shading green, right? Um, and I'm going to just kind of come in here and start here at the base of this turkey and go like that. And then I'll come over here and just do like following that basic CNC line, okay? That's all I'm really doing is just following that line. Getting there just a little bit more and more and more. And I'll come in here and do it like this and probably go like that, okay? And I'm gonna put a little bit more paint here. And then I'll just take this brush, the same brush, I'm not doing anything any different, and I'll just make some strokes. Okay, already in just the little bit that I've been on here, we have our feathers, this part, pretty much shaded. And that's really all there is to it. Of course, I'll be coming back and doing some um, outlining, right? Because outlining is what's going to make it look really good. So let's pull this little guy over here while I have that shading green. And I will just dip it in here. And I'm going to just come over here and start. And I'm going to go all the way down. Notice when my brush runs out of paint, I don't stop. I keep going. I don't let that stop me. Because I'll come back over this side of it and put some more paint on there. And then I'll just come over here and kind of pull it up like this and something like that. There you go. And then I've got two leaves here. Just going to kind of come down and kind of go back up. I, um, hey Wanda. I, uh, Carolyn, how are you doing? I'm glad y'all are here. I'm uh, doing a, actually I'm doing two of them. A turkey and a cat. Because after all, it is fall, y'all. Well, here in uh, Pearland, it, it, it just kind of feels wet. Because I about, for two or three days, we've had nothing but wet. And I'm kind of over the wet. But... You know, I guess the good news about that is that it makes uh, getting yard art in the ground a lot easier. Let's see what I did. I'll turn around and see what I did. Okay, so I'm going to come back with this green right here. And notice what that shading does to just these, these eyes. It just makes a big difference. I'm going to kind of come back here, do something like that. And then I'll probably do this. Something like that. All right, and then I'll come over here, and then we're almost ready to go and just do a lot of shading and orange on this guy. Mm -hmm. So let's pick up, I'm gonna do orange on here, but now I'm gonna pick up a brush that's a little bit bigger. I was using a smaller brush, but I'm gonna pick up a, a bigger brush. This one, Y'all, the labels come off. I'm going to guess it to be a number 10. I'm not real sure, to tell you the truth. And looking at this, I wonder. I missed this on the black. I just That just now dawned on me. Anyway, let me show you what I like to do, the look that I like on these pumpkins when we're talking about the eyes and the nose. Because to me, on anything, the focal point would be the face, right? And especially the eyes. So I just take, and I'll just come all the way around. And I just kind of keep dipping, and I'll come down here like this, and then I'll go up and come back a little bit. And I've got some green in there, but that's not the end of the world. That green is still pretty wet, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I can always come back and tip that off with some white if I don't want that green to show. And in just this little bit of time, y'all, see what your what the possibilities are with your uh, your eyes and your nose getting some shading on there. Okay, and I and I will do the same with the mouth. I'm gonna kind of come over here, and I'll probably make some brush strokes in there. 
My style, I guess you could say, is to have a lot of color. So I like a lot of color on all my on all of my stuff. To me, it makes it really bright. If that's too colorful for you, then just choose a color that's a little more muted and not so bright. Hey, Alma and Michelle, how are y'all doing? And Kimberly, so good to see y'all. I am just doing some, uh, oh, I guess some shading, I guess you could call it. I'm gonna come over here. Let me move this over here a little bit better where y'all can see. I'm gonna start on this outside and kind of come all the way down. You gotta have quite a bit of paint to do this part. Something like that. And then I will turn this around, let you kind of see it the way it's supposed to be as far as the angle being a little bit better. And then this is the lid. I call this my pumpkin lid. So you kind of think of it as a lid. So what I'm gonna do, Alma says hi. Um, I'm going to just kind of come in here. First thing I'm gonna do is go around my stalk, right? And then I'm gonna come over here. And let me see what I did over here. Okay, so I did go all the way around. Uh -huh, I couldn't remember if I did or if I didn't. And I'm just gonna kind of bring some brush strokes in here just to kind of force it to become more of a lid look. Right, something like that. And then I'll do that. And then of course we got, you know, we're just gonna put some brush strokes in there. But really as far as shading, this guy's done. I'm gonna, I might shade his nose. I kept his nose orange y'all, cause I just kind of like that idea. Make it look a little Halloween-y. I'll put this aside. We're gonna work on now, I've got pumpkins here. He's nesting on pumpkins. And while I have the orange, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to just kind of go on this outline like that. And then I'm going to force this pattern. And there's not a, a, a CNC line, but I'm just going to kind of force it there. Make it, make it happen, if you will. I'm going to do something like this. And notice I'm just kind of making that pumpkin by just doing my brush strokes. All right. Okay, I'm gonna come over here to kind of do the same thing. And then I'll do that and go over here. And basically in just a few brush strokes, you can see you've got a basic pumpkin. I'll come back and put some more shading in there. We'll come over here to this one. And if it's kind of willy wonky, it doesn't matter. It's a pumpkin. They're not supposed to be totally asymmetrical and perfect. Good thing because y'all, mine are not. <laughs> mine are not. Not tonight. It's too late. It's Friday, y'all. It's kind of one of those. It's been a good week. It's been productive. But man, it's been, we've been, we got lights in. And so we've been putting a lot of lights and everything for all of our Christmas stuff, you know. So that means you gotta start hauling that stuff out of storage. And uh, it's not hard till you do about, I don't know, 60 of them a day. And those trees get heavy. That's what I've been doing this week. All right, so I've got my feathers and my pumpkin. Now I need to work on getting some shading brown and getting to work on my turkey. So let me show you what we're gonna do here. Y'all, I have painted turkeys for a long time. They're probably one of my absolute favorites. And I think it's because uh, they're so pretty. They're just pretty. And uh, for those of you that do this to sell, it's turkeys are a good seller. They just are. You have to get a little more for them because they are a lot of work, but they're just so precious. And then I'll probably come back down here. But the good news is, as far as my turkeys, y'all, I don't really try to make them all perfect looking. That's not my bag, okay? But I will just kind of take that and just kind of go airborne there and flick that up. See what I'm doing? Just kind of 
starting here and then going up off that board laying the brush down and then coming back up same thing here and I never worry about them being perfect it's a turkey it's not supposed to be but I'll come back in here and just kind of do something like this just some brush strokes here we go and maybe something like that here we go now this is nutmeg so it's a dark dark color but I'm still going to use this shading brown and I'm just kind of going around taking that brush up and again you can see it's not perfect that's not what I'm going for I got my brown on I'm gonna take a little bit, um, love that pumpkin with the gnome that's sitting behind you. I do too, uh, but you know what? He was not easy to paint. Victoria and I worked on him, and I thought about releasing it as a blank, y'all, but he's pretty doggone, I don't know if complicated is the right word. There's a lot of detail on him, so I didn't release him because I just think, man, he's a lot of work, but he's super cute. Uh, hey, Kathy, how are you? I've got some shading uh, red, y'all, and I'm going to go around this little part. I don't know what you call this. I call it the goblet. I have no idea what it is, this little the part that hangs down. Now, while I have this, I'm going to pick up a script liner. I don't normally outline any of my turkeys in black, y'all. I always do uh, shading red. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't outline them in black, but that's not the look that I like. Even though this almost looks like a black, it's got a lot of red in it. A turkey is an animal, so you want them, it's a living thing. So I think it needs a kind of a warm tone to it. So I'll just come in here. This paint is wet, so I, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm just going to come in here in that CNC line, y'all, and just go to town with my brush strokes. I put a lot of brush strokes on turkeys. I like them like that. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to do that if you don't want to but I put a lot into it because that's the kind of turkey I like. I have I have uh, lived in this house that we're in for, I think, 20 years, and we live on a big thoroughfare, major thoroughfare here in Pearland. My house sits right in front of a major thoroughfare. My house and my business are about, I don't know, maybe a half a mile from each other, the way the crow flies. So we get a lot of traffic and... Um, People will stop here at the house and say, you know, people who don't know me or whatever, they'll say, well, you know, where did you get that? And I said, oh, I painted it. And they're like, well, do you sell it? Yes, I'm telling them the story is. And nine times out of 10, if it's fall, they all ask about a turkey. That's what, they, I mean, they might, there might be all kinds of things out there, but they're asking about turkeys. And uh, so turkeys are pretty popular. Uh, it is a lot more brush stroking than some other items, y'all, but I love the turkey. I've got paint on my elbow. The reason I'm wiping it off, I hate to get paint on my elbow because I'm in the shower trying to scrub it off and you can't ever see your elbow, so you don't really know if it ever came off. <laughs> so, uh, I just got this shading red here and I'm just going to town with it. And again, I just kind of come back and put brush strokes in there. Okay, that's all I do. Here we go, brush strokes, brush strokes, brush strokes. Mm -hmm. Now, the feathers I do, on this, I really do follow that CNC line to make it look like I've got that uh, graduation of color and of size of my feathers. And this is a shading red that I'm using. If you don't have shading red, you can make it by mixing some red, put some black in the red. And just keep add, adding the black to the red until you get the color you want. That's all this is. And here we go, okay? So in just that little bit of time, we have that. Now, I'm going to bring it into here. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna come in here, and then I'm gonna pull this like this. So I'm gonna keep going to right here. If 
like that. I keep putting paint on here, y'all, because it takes a lot of paint to fall down into that CNC line. If your CNC line, if you like order blanks from us and that CNC line is not getting covered up, put more water in your paint and then paint it again. You're not getting enough paint on there. I put a lot of paint on there, okay? Now, I'm not gonna come back here. This is gonna be white and I'll show y'all in a little bit what I mean by that uh, in more detail. So let me come down here and just finish this part up. Now we've got something like this and I'll probably kind of come over here and do something like this. And then I'll just come up here. And I'd like I told y'all, I do a lot of brush strokes on my turkeys. You don't feel like you have to, but that's just what I like. Lots of brush strokes on my turkeys. Okay, I think I got it. Now, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with some white. Even though I'm really not ready for highlighting, I'm gonna go ahead and do it, because I'm over here with the edge of this turkey. I think if you look at this, you'll, you might decide to give it a try, because it's a real pretty look. So when I come out here on this very edge, I just try to kinda do that whole edge in white. Just kinda come out here and do that whole edge and white and of course I need to highlight and I will y'all know I always highlight everything but right now I'm just concentrating on this edge gotta get some paint on there y'all and gonna do like that then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kind of come back I'm gonna just do a, a light thing and then I'll kind of come back so you see, it doesn't take a whole lot, and then I get a lot of brush stroking on here. Lots and lots. That's basically how you do that turkey. See, he's really pretty now. I'm gonna do the white here. I'm not ready for that black in the eye yet because uh, I've gotta let this white dry, but I'll, I'll try, I'll do this part before we get off the lap. So let's turn him around and then we're gonna do, mm, excuse me, I'm gonna try something here, y'all. I got paint all over me, that's okay. That's okay. How do you prevent your paint from dripping from your brush? Um, you know what you do wonder if you're having that trouble, what I would do? Because uh, that's a good question. So if you do it like this, it's gonna drip, right? So I put a lot on there and then a lot of times, I, you might not can tell, it's a subtle movement because I'm going fast. I'll take it, I put it on there and then I'll take it here on the side and kind of brush it off a little bit. That's kind of generally what I do. Hope that helps. Good question though. Hey Kathy, how are you? And Darlene, hi Susan. I'm glad y'all are joining me. I am just doing some um, turkeys and some pumpkins, y'all. Who doesn't love turkeys and pumpkins? I'm taking just a little bit of this shading yellow and just kind of coming in here. To me, sometimes I'll do this, make it give it a little bit more of a fall look because I, it's almost like what I call a marigold color. We call it shading yellow, but it's really like a marigold. A good fall color. I'm just kind of putting some in here and just dabbling it. That's all I'm doing. And then I'll come over here and do the same. And I just kind of put this marigold where there's no other color. Where you just see that base orange is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Just kind of coming in here. Almost like a dry brush, y'all. Not quite totally dry, but almost. All right, in just a little bit of time, I've got some uh, color on that pumpkin. So let's go back. I'm gonna wash out this brush that I had, uh, that strip liner that I had all the white on. I'm gonna wash that out, and now I'm going to, so if you look, Wanda, I've got all this in here. There's, that strip liner can hold a lot of paint, but it's still real runny, right? So I'll kind of come in here and just tap it off a little bit over there. 
And then I'll just kind of start following that CNC line with this, this is what I call a red orange. Now on these lines kind of here, I will do kind of a dash line a lot of times. Just kind of something like that, just kind of bouncing that brush up and down. I told y'all I love to paint turkeys and it's not, it's not a joke, I love to paint them. I just think they're fun and they're gorgeous. You know, and, they, and, and out in the yard, they just look beautiful. And then I'll kind of just do a few more. Wherever I have that shading orange, I'll just kind of take this brush, put a little bit more paint on that shading orange. I'm gonna put some white on it. And other than that, my pumpkin is done, y'all. See, there's not, I haven't, you know, spent a tremendous amount of effort making it look like a million dollars, but to me, it looks pretty doggone good. All right, then I'll kind of come here and again, I'll just pick that brush up, up and down, up and down. And then on the outer part of the pumpkin, I'll put more paint on that part, y'all. And then I'll probably do some brush strokes in here. Something like that. And I'm gonna come around here. I forgot to outline that stalk, so let me do that. Oh, I gotta do this too. See, it's not, it's really, I think if you just follow step by step, um, you know, doing one step at a time, it's pretty doggone predictable. I don't know if easy is the right word because it's work. And, uh, you know, but anything worthwhile is work. That's just the way it is. All right, and I'll probably bring that one down like that. So I've got that. Now I think, really y'all, I just need some white on this guy. So I'm gonna brush, wash this brush out again. Y'all can hear my dog. That's Ellie Mae acting crazy. She looks at herself in the reflection on the glass. Of, I have glass doors. And uh, she'll sit there and look at herself like she's crazy. It does make you wonder. She's, she's playing y'all does make you wonder. Don't you wonder what they're thinking? That's what I, I, said, I always wonder, y'all. What are they thinking? I got to put some white on this turkey because I, I, I didn't do that part. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and just put some highlight on this turkey or this pumpkin part right here, I should say. There we go. Let's go back up here and do a little bit more, y'all. Love turkey. I'm gonna turn it around where you can really kind of see it, you know, what it looks like from that perspective. Let me put some white in here and then a little bit more white up here. I told y'all I do lots of brush strokes and I do. Okay, I wanted to show you how I'm gonna do this eye. In case you decide you wanna do something like this, you'll know exactly how to do it, hopefully. Oh, <laughs> uh, hopefully, okay. So I've got black here on my brush. I've got my script liner. And I'm just gonna kinda come in here and I'm going around that CNC line. Now you don't have to do this, y'all, but I love uh, eyelashes. So I always put eyelashes on almost any and everything I do. Now this is really, really wet, so I cannot put, I'll, I'll come back here later and put a white dot right there. And that's all I do for that eye. I make that eye like that, put a white dot on it, I'm done. So that's my turkey. I'm gonna finish this uh, kitty cat on a pumpkin, but this is the turkey, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's really about doing your shading and doing your brush strokes and outlining. That's really all it is. Okay, all right, let's go over here. I'm gonna finish this little guy up. And it won't take me long. I'm gonna do some shading on this stalk and then it's really just outlining. That's all it is. And if you can notice, if you've watched me any length of time, you get a sense that there is a certain methodology. Meaning, I always do this, the same thing for the most part. I always do it in the same order. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Alma and Wanda. Thank y'all. It's always nice to hear compliments, isn't it? I don't care how old you get or how young you are. It's just good to hear. Okay, so let's see what shall I do. 
thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay, I'm gonna pick up this shading, this uh, outline orange or red orange, and I'm gonna do that first. So let me bring that over here. I forgot to base coat that black, so let me do that right quick. I don't know that I'll finish this tonight for y'all because it'll be so wet, but I should have done this in black, and I didn't. This is really the kitty cat's body. So I need to bring that in here. There we go. Okay, now, got that done. Let's go back. I got my red orange and I'm, this is the part that I'm outlining. So I'm outlining in a script liner and the goal here is to make sure that you've got enough water in there that you've got that paint to fall down into that CNC line. You're covering up that edge, if you will. And then I would probably kind of come up here and make another one, just a, just a line out there. And then I'll come up. See that green? If you don't like it, just kind of come back and cover it a little bit with the orange and you don't even notice it. I'll do this around the nose. Again, I'll come up, do another brush stroke, brush stroke, brush stroke, brush stroke. And I'll probably do something like this. Uh, something like that. Sometimes my orange and my green kind of variegate into one another. I don't worry about that. When it happens, I leave it alone and let it do its thing. So I'm really not trying to go for the perfectionist kind of look. Part of the reason they're variegating together like that is they're still wet. If they were dry, that really wouldn't be happening. But y'all, for the purposes of a video, I have to make sure I try to show as much of that as I can. So if my green and orange variegate together, I don't worry about it. I just move on and let it be. But if you don't like that, make sure you, you let it dry real good and you won't have that. Just kind of going in that CNC line. And I'm gonna just kind of do some brush strokes out here while I've got this in my hand. And I'm gonna come up here and do something like that. Just kind of go up and down and maybe do a, a dashed line, if you will. And of course, on the outside, on that outer edge, I always do a solid line of color. We're gonna go up like that, come back down. Just do some brush strokes. Now the kitty cat part, I like to do him in this color because it gives me a pop. I'm not gonna do that part right there because that part right there is wet, y'all. Thank you, Carolyn. Carolyn says, so pretty, so colorful. All right, I'm gonna come in here and I'm using this and I'm just going around those CNC lines, making the basic shape of the cat's face. Might just do some brush strokes like that. Kind of come in here. Now, sometimes my black is going to show through this orange, but I don't worry about that. I leave that alone. If it shows through, it shows through. Because how really could it not? Because you're trying to cover up basically almost a red color. You're trying to cover up black. It's not really going to do that. And I'll just give them some whiskers. And I also always outline the eyes, y'all. I'll probably kind of come over here, do something like that. And the nose, outline the eye. And I gotta give him a little bit of a, little bit of hair on the top of his head. Y'all, I think this kitty cat is super cute. And again, my black is showing through the brush stroke of the orange. I don't worry about that, I let it show. Okay, coming over here. And then we got to do his basic paw. This paw right here. 
something like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. It's really wet, so I'm gonna leave that alone right now. I'm just kind of bringing that red orange. If this is too bright for you, you could do this in a, I got a lot of red in this orange. If you want to do it something darker, you could tone it down with some brown. All right, kitty cat, kitty cat, kitty cat, kitty cat. Okay, something like that. And I'll come around my stalk here, 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 and do, I'm making that lid. This is what I would call a pumpkin lid, y'all. I'd probably come around here and do something like that. Now I want to do this uh, stock in a outline. Uh, this is shading red. I'm treating it as an outline color. I treat shading red as an outline color a lot, y'all. And then I'm gonna switch off to black for my green leaves. I usually do green, outline my green leaves in black. That is something I usually do. All right, almost done, y'all, so cute. I love to paint, in case y'all couldn't tell. <laughs> y'all, painting is just like, I don't know, it's the best. Because I think it's the fact that when you're done, you get just such a pretty result. So you really have something to show for your effort. And um, I think that's probably why I like it so much. Good thing, since that's how I earn my living, y'all. All right, I'm gonna kinda come in here. I'm just gonna give it some definition. Now, it's time to highlight. I'm washing out my brush. I'm gonna pick up white, y'all. You're just gonna see how easy this is. Hopefully it's gonna inspire y'all to do some painting. Maybe some fall stuff or Halloween. I always like how that white come, really looks on that black. And I'll just do something like this. Something like that. There we go, yes. And I'm just gonna bring that white in between the black. Same thing here, 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 here. And I might even kind of come over there and do something like that. All right, let's turn this guy around. I'm gonna bring him all the way over here. Do it like that, okay. I'm gonna put some white in here. He's got a lot of black going on. So I'm gonna kind of brighten it up a little bit with some white. I'll come back in a minute and put some black in there, y'all. Just putting some white in there. You can tell I always put a lot of white on my stuff. That's just me. Doesn't mean you have to if you don't if you don't like that, then you don't have to do that. Okay, so let's go in here and do some black on his eyes and we're almost done. We are almost done. Y'all, isn't painting the best? All right, I've got this black paint and so he's got these little pupils that are almost like diamond shape. It'll be tomorrow before I can come in here after they're dry, I'll put a white dot in there. But this is really, really wet, so I can't do it right now. But tomorrow, I'll come in here and put a white dot. And I've gotta fix this in here because that's still really wet. But other than that, he is good to go. And I'll turn around and show you. I think. I think we're good. This out the way I'm gonna show y'all what the kitty cat looks like. Mm -hmm. So 
So I base coated this in orange, light orange. I did it twice, two, two coats for the base. I base coated the whole thing, I primered it. And then, of course, I did my yellows, my greens, browns, and my blacks. But that's what he looks like. Super cute kind of guy. Notice when you look at him, some of my paint is kind of bleeding together. And I want you to look at that orange. It does not cover the black totally. It doesn't. So don't get frustrated. Because sometimes I think people think, oh, well, I saw on the video this orange. It looks so good. Oh, Lord, that ran. But um, the truth is, if you really look at that, um, Lord, I got the fan going, y'all. That orange does not cover the black all the way. It just doesn't. So I gotta come in here, pick this up a little bit. That's what I'm doing. I'm picking that black up. I just taking my finger, cause I, I wasn't careful the way I, I was showing y'all, which I don't mind. I don't regret showing y'all. Cause that's the point of what we're doing, is to show y'all. And I'm all, if y'all are like me, I'm always the kind of person, I wanna see every little thing. And then I'm gonna come in here and fix this tomorrow, y'all. I got it dried up, but I'll fix it tomorrow. Hey, uh, his eye bled, it sure did. I gotta come in here tomorrow and work on him after it's totally dry. And, uh, but I'm not worried about it. If that's the worst thing that ever happens, my life is good. All right, y'all, you can get your cat on the uh, pumpkin lid. Or got, if you got your own cat at home or your own pumpkin, it's that time. Y'all got to get the paintbrush and get going. Uh, we will be back next week. I'm not sure exactly what we're doing next week, but uh, we'll be going to do something. Ashley will have those brushes on Sunday. And she is also bringing, for those of you that are wanting to order blanks, she's bringing a lot of blanks this weekend. So she'll do a post. So if you follow us, she'll put the post and say, okay, these blanks are in stock because uh, some of y'all have been asking about that. I hope y'all have a great weekend. Thank you, Debbie, for all you always do for me. Debbie takes care of me. And uh, thank y'all for joining me. Hopefully, you know, I inspired you to go do some painting on your own. Um, if nothing else, we got to hang out for a little while and uh, I can't go in there and go to bed too early. That's why I've been doing lives at night, y'all, because if I go and lay down on the bed at seven, I'll be asleep by 7.30 or eight and I'll be awake at midnight. So if I come out here and I do a live, then I have to make myself stay awake. Hey, Patty, how are you? Did you get to call the store today, Patty? I know you tried to call and I think Tracy said she called you back. Uh, hopefully y'all got that figured out. If not, you can call tomorrow. We'll be, we'll be, the store is open seven days a week. So you can call tomorrow if you didn't. Uh, but yeah, and uh, we will be out at the store all weekend. So if you can come by and see us, we have a ceramics paint party tomorrow. Those of you that are close by, we still have slots open for that. Starts at six o'clock tomorrow night at the store. You can paint a pumpkin tree or you can paint, oh, you did, good, good. Or you can paint, let's see, a pumpkin tree or a pumpkin with a witch hat or a gnome with a tree. And we'll, that'll be tomorrow night. We'll see you guys later. And Patty, I'll get your uh, order out. Y'all have a good one. Crystal, so good to see you. And thank y'all for hanging out with me. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.